this is a um, a large plate of bone and uh, we've got several of, of these in the museum and uh, this one we think we acquired in, in 1900 as far as we can tell and with this large plate of bone there also is lots of bones like this um, which is a sort of long spiky looking thing um, and so these are large bones what do they come from? Um, they're from some rocks that we call the Oxford clay which is found out near Peterborough and uh, we acquired these from a, a Peterborough shopkeeper who was uh, merrily collecting out in, in the, sort of the early 1900s and uh, he gave us uh, some of his material. Um, and so when these, these kind of specimens were first found in the 1800s um, people were slightly scratching their heads and uh, as some dinosaur bones had been found in the Oxford clay before that they assumed perhaps naively, perhaps not, um, that these were perhaps tail spikes from a Stegosaurus dinosaur and that these big flat bones were perhaps um, the plates that go along the tail and the back of the Stegosaurus. So that was a, a good assumption. Um, a little bit later, um, Charles Marsh, the famous American paleontologist, came to visit um, the collections that had these bones in. He saw them and said, these aren't dinosaurs, they're fish. And uh, almost as if to say, don't you know anything, you British, you know, um, amateurs. Um, we now know that this is a fish. It's uh, a very large fish, a fish called Leedsichthys. Um, and it's named after the fossil collector um, Alfred Leeds, who first discovered it. Um, and uh, these are found in several collections in, in, the, in the UK, uh, and also farther afield now. And um, particularly Natural History Museum, um, museums in Peterborough, but also the Glasgow um, Hunterian Museum. And uh, recently my colleague Jeff Liston, who's researching this fish, came down to Leicester to give a talk. and. Uh, Seeing as he knows more about this fish than anybody else, we thought we'd go and talk to him and see what he could tell us. Here is a specimen uh, from the fish leads like this. And this is a part that was excavated uh, during a dig in 2002 um, in the star pit in Whittlesey. Um, and during the 3,100 um, person hours that we put in excavating this specimen, um, we came up with over 2,000 separate bone fragments that were, were retrieved. Um, and this animal, Leeds Ictus, is um, a fish. It's a very large bony fish. Um, generally the, the remains look quite a lot like this, they're kind of fragmented, they look a bit of a mess and so they've been very hard to understand. Um, if I can give you an indication, this bone here is uh, called a hypobranchial and it is part of the gill basket of the specimen of the, of the fish. Um, and this bone actually has been misidentified um, historically um, as an indicator of uh, a dinosaur. Um, and what was happening uh, in the, uh, there was a dig that happened actually in Germany. Um, somebody in the midst of all these Leedsichthus remains, they found this bone and they thought, ah, this is a stegosaur tail spine. So they actually have this map of the animal with this big fish and in the center of it, this bone that they're identifying as a stegosaur, but actually it's not, it's part of the gill basket of this fish. Now in addition, what we can see is all these um, long curved elements here which are gill rakers. And the nature of these gill rakers is that they're, they're long, they're thin, and they're very elaborate. They're quite complex structures. And that tells us that this animal is likely to have been a suspension feeder. So that's an animal that um, extracts its food from the, the water column without actually seeing individual prey items and going in and getting them, if you like. Um, and these gill rakers are something similar to something like a sieve, not quite like a sieve, but slightly uh, similar in terms of being a sort of baffle that the food particles would collide with and be collected on and then actually pass to the, the, um, the esophagus and down into the stomach of the fish. So um, this specimen is, is one of um, uh, many hundreds um, of pieces that we um, uh, collected out of the pit. Um, but it just very nicely um, shows this element here. And what we know uh, from this specimen, having um, 
worked with uh, some of the bones and compared them to other fish bones uh, is that this individual of this animal was probably around about eight meters long um, which is very big for um, a bony fish even you know um, well at any point in geological history let alone today it's, it's very very large and this shows that there was enough food in the sea for it to be able to um, occupy the same niche as um, baleen whales do today or whale sharks or basking sharks do they all eat this zooplankton and they all grow to quite large size um, but the difference is this was a bony fish rather than a shark or a whale that was doing it um, and it was extremely successful.